in your son and be radically disposed to faith and radically embrace truth in our hearts by the Holy Spirit that we would walk by faith moment by moment and experience the reality of your son's work on the cross and day to day living Father, that we would be equipped for warfare. We would be deeply edified in our soul. And we would know love, what love is. We would know your love, the spirit of love, the Holy Spirit love. We ask you this tonight by faith. Bless all our prayers tonight. We know we can bind the enemy and he's bound. We know that God has commissioned us to be here in Christ's stead. Worldwide, all the believers, whatever denomination or group they're with, every born again believer, we are commissioned by God. Father, we, we stand in the barley patch, we stand in our territory in grace, and the enemy will flee in seven directions. We expect him to flee in seven directions. And we are well aware, very capable, and we are equipped to think with you. Bless our thinking tonight in these few minutes, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, you may be seated. Greetings in church in it. Uh, Indianapolis, uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, Chicago, Marlboro. We don't always say it. And to the inter internet audience, Missouri, some folks there. And so tonight we're going to speak about love. And we had planned to continue on vocabulary, a uh, spiritual vocabulary, but uh, I'm, I'm more inclined this afternoon studying about love and thinking of love to share with you on that subject. So I'd, I'd like you to turn to 1 Corinthians 13, first of all. And we'll go back and forth a little bit. Didn't I, I say the other night that we, I was going to preach for 30, 15 minutes? Didn't it go for a long time? A long, long time. Ooh, I was sure to sh sh tell me about that after the message. No, you didn't. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, that's good, though. Okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. I, I decided. So now notice here. 1 Corinthians 13. Child, verse 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. Anybody want to speak as a child right now? Go ahead, give it a shot. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. I am hungry, Texas Greg said. Okay, I want candy. Are we done? Mommy, can I have this? I want it. I want it. I want it. You can't have it. Ah! Okay. Anybody know about children? Uh, you know about, raise your hand if you know about children, huh? Okay, a little bit. When I was a child, what happened? I spoke as one. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. I thought as a child. So let's draw a little picture of this, okay? Here we go. There is a child. <laughs> is that? It's clear, isn't it? <clears throat> okay, that is a child in, in, in his world. In his world. And his world is a child's world. When we were children 
in the Lord or even unsaved people and we lived in our world and our world was the world of a child. One of the characteristics of the child's world, world is how much that world revolves around him, okay? His world is his world. I thought as one, I understood as one, I spoke as one. But when I became a man, we'll put here a man, What a happy group of people. Wow. When I, when I became a man, let's read the verse. When I became a man, verse 11, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. And I realize there are a number of ways we could understand this verse, but I want to use it to make a few points about love. Love is something, the love that we read about in the scripture has a mind. Love is actually, the love that we learn about is the love of God. God is love. And for us to shift from ourselves to God is what happened to us when we became believers. When we became believers, we were born again. And now we started to think about God. We study him. We listen to messages about him. We trust him. We actually take steps uh, by faith. And the Holy Spirit of God dwells in us. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is love. Romans 5.5, 5, that love is coming from our hearts. And our heart is the most important part of our being. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes the issues of life. We didn't have a very good one, actually. We were, we were told it was extremely wicked and very deceitful. As a child who wants his world to revolve around him, and he needs to grow up and realize that there is more and if he would become a man, he would realize what a thrill it is to become a human being made in the image of God with the knowledge of God and the love of God. Galatians 5, verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit is love. This love is a mind, and I want to read some things to you about it. But read first with me to first Corinth or first John. Turn with me to first John chapter four and verse seven. <clears throat> Are you okay over there? <laughs> that did not sound good. Okay, chapter four, verse seven. Beloved. Let us love one another. Now, many of us here in our church and in our lives, we know that there is this love that is between us. But often we don't talk about it. It is there. And it has a certain mind. And this mind is a different one from the mind of the fallen nature of man the sin nature of man that is revolving around himself and can easily get hurt, wounded, disappointed. I'll put a few words here. Envy, jealousy. Two powerful words that are very much a part of our fallen nature. 
But when there is love from God in our hearts, these words cannot be there. They are not powerful. These words are not there. Envy is not there with God's love. It's amazing. And one of the things that you discovered when you became a believer was a personal freedom. And you, you start to think like, wow. And you even look around, you look around like this, you're thinking like, am, am I the only one that is experiencing this? And then other people are looking around like you that, like that also toward you. And you go, wow, you know, this is, this is amazing. We don't have the words to define it, though. When we first become a believer and the Spirit of God comes into our heart and into our mind, we begin to love. One of the first uh, things that happens is that we end up loving ourselves. Not like it's in a process, but automatically. Wow, I've got peace. Wow, I'm okay. Wow, unresolved conflicts about myself. All oh, that's kind of gone out the window. Where'd that go? I didn't even notice that, but I'm, I'm kind of at peace now. What happened to me? And God, God tells us that when Christ died, I died with him. And when he was raised, we were raised with him. And now we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And now the Holy Spirit is in our life to make that real for us and to say, yes, you are loved with the love of God. Not a, a small love of a child. Because one of the characteristics of a child's love is that it is conditional. You know, if you give me that candy, I, I love you. If you don't give me that candy, you're going to pay for it. I have a loud mouth, and I can throw tantrums real good. I practice at night. And I can throw myself on the floor in the grocery store and get you in a lot of trouble, so give me the candy. Is it any different for adults? as they grow up and they also manipulate and control and they're driven by very low quality emotions. It's self-love, self-interest, self-occupation, importance, personal importance, recognition. It's very common, but but we are called to something that, that is amazing in our lives. It is absolutely amazing. It is a, a love that is, God is defining himself this way. First John 4, 8, God is love. Now let's think about God for a minute. Is he jealous, envious, insecure, wounded, hurt? If you don't love him, is he going to get angry with you and destroy you? If you don't care about him, who is this God of love that we read about in the scripture and also God of righteousness and sent his son so that he would love us with an everlasting love? Jeremiah 31 verse 3, a love that would never fail. If you hurt God a lot, he treats you in a different way. If we were to hurt God a lot, it, he, it, the way he treats us is uh, overwhelming because his nature is not like a human being who is a child, but his nature is like Christ who Christ crucified said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Read this with me. Verse John 4, verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. 
and everyone that loveth is born of God and knows God. This is the agape love. He that loves not knows not God, for God is love. No human being could ever love like this without the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit in us, and we love like God loves. Amazing. Do we really? Yeah. It's amazing. We love like God loves. That's verse 9. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. And that's how we see that love. Here in his love, not that we love God, but he loved us. This is spontaneous love. Yeah, have you ever have you ever been loved by somebody who was suspicious of you? Or you were suspicious of them? And you sit down at a table and you're eating together and you kind of got one eye on the guy and he's got one eye on you. And you get along together and you're kind of feeling each other out. And maybe at the end of the evening or the week or the month, you decide that you love him. Maybe. What happened with us? There was none of that in our relationships. There was none of that in our... What happened was that when we... When we accepted Christ and the Holy Spirit came in us, the same spirit, mind, the same person that loved us when we were lost came into us and we just loved out of our hearts. And it was, I sit down at a table with somebody to eat with them and I love them. I don't have one eye on them and I'm not suspicious of them. I have the nature where you can take risks and you can love and you can care spontaneously by your nature. And there is no cold calculation. It is, uh, it is God is in me and he is loving you. And I'm going for the ride. I'm in it also. I've agreed with God. I'm living in the spirit of God. And that love is a spontaneous love. That's why a new person that comes in here, there isn't any calculation. There is not suspicion. There is not a cold ma management of the relationship. There is simply the nature of God. That is how God has loved us. It is. When you are guilty, criminal, at enmity, lousy, empty, deceitful, lying. Uh, actually, Hebrews 12 says bastard. Wow, what a word. That's what God uh, says about us. But then he gave a son. He gave a son. He gave a son. That's it. He gave a son. Guys, he, he loved us. He, in eternity past, decided in himself that he would love us with an everlasting love. And that's what he did. He gave his son. That's amazing. We got saved. All we did was say, I believe you, Jesus, and that's it. Tell me there was something more needed. There wasn't. It was faith, and we were born again by how? The grace of God. Now, what is our nature? The spirit and the nature is of God that dwells in us. Look at the verse with me. It says, <clears throat> verse 10, here in his love, not that we love God. How about that? Come on. Not that we love God. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that God loved us. That's love. That's different from every other kind of relationship. It is here in his love, not that we love God. And I live on that verse. 
Uh, we have functioned on that verse for years. I reflect on that verse. I think about that verse here in his love, not that I love God, not that I love God, but that God loved me. He is the head. We are not. He is the one that loves us. He is the bridegroom and we are the bride. Here in his love that God forgave me. God empowers me. God teaches me. God loves us. Okay? And read it with me. And he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we all ought also to love one another. Now, I'm not balancing the message tonight. I know that, that there are people that when I'm preaching a message, I know that maybe they'd like me to say something more in that way and something more in that way. And they, they like to do it. And I'm happy to hear from them if they want to share with me. That's what rap sessions are for. And you can always write me a letter or call me or whatever. I, I'm open and I receive it. But I cannot cover it all. It says prophecy is in part, Right? Prophecy is in part, meaning there is no perfect message. You're just bits and pieces of food. Okay? You're awesome. But let's, let's move here. It says, verse 12, no man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us, and his love is perfected in us. I think we could say it this way. Nobody's seen God, but if they come amongst us, they're going to see something that's from God, and that is love. And it will be, we'll walk into a fellowship where there is love in our heart. And many times over the years we've seen, we've met people that are calm, and they say, I've never seen anything like this. I, I can't believe it. It happened to me when I first came into the church. I remember up in Maine, I was like, wow, what's going on? This is amazing. What's happening? I don't even know what's going on. But there is, uh, there is, that was the Holy Spirit there. Verse 13, hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he's given us of his spirit. And we have seen, do testify, the Father sent the Son to, the, to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. <clears throat> there is a whole mind that people have that is not love. Let me say it again. There's a whole mindset that people have, and they, they're great Christians. They think like this, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian. I, you know, I'm a believer. I say my prayers. But then but my whole mindset, they think that it is that is fine because it's normal and everybody thinks this way, but it is not love. And I would love to be able to put my finger on that mind just to help us all. And this afternoon, I think we did as we were studying and thinking about it. And I want to share a few things with you and, and just to encourage us and help us. Some people, you can write this down very brief here. Some people dwell on others' faults. Think of a husband who is forever poring over the faults of his wife and has no heart to notice her excellencies. 
If that is how he's thinking, he just drives in the car and he's thinking of his wife's faults, then that is not love. That is a calculation in my mind, and the root of it is this picture here as a child. I am thinking as a child, and I'm understanding as a child. I'm not thinking with God. Because God, in his mind, is not dwelling on your wife's faults. He is thinking of her new identity. He's thinking of her potential. He's thinking of how much he loves her. He's thinking of how he gave her the Holy Spirit. And he's thinking of how you could develop in her a capacity for God if you loved her. But instead, we're developing a capacity in our own selves for a childlike mentality that is potentially, well, at the worst, it's destructive, and at the best, it just doesn't produce anything in your relationship. And you go to Christian, you go to the church, and you read your Bible, and you say your prayers, but you are violating love. And, and we do it. And I'm saying it with, with you. I'm saying it to myself, and I love it. And I don't find mind preaching to you. I can preach to you all night. It doesn't matter. I'm not saying it for that reason. I'm telling you that every human being has a tendency with his uh, nature to live and think outside of love. Agape love. Because agape love, sa it says... It does not think evil. And that is a loaded statement. We've bear, we burden our heart without love. And there, the, it, okay, no, number two, a little statement here. A disposition to complain of ill treatment Received from others is another evidence of evil thinking. I got hurt by him. I get, he hurt me. Okay, he hurt me. Okay, fine. He hurt me. No, no, no. He hurt me. Do you see that he hurt me? Okay. He hurt me. And we say, yeah, okay. What are you going to do about it? Well, I'm going to be thinking about it. All right. He's not getting away with it. I want, I want this thing to be, and I'm going to give it to them. Okay, there is a way to deal with a conflict with somebody, and you can go to them alone, and so on. But I'm trying to say something else. If you dwell on those things that have hurt you and troubled you, and you complain about how others have injured you and troubled you, then you are outside of the love that is in God that was given to us in Christ Jesus. Isn't that amazing? It is. Well then, well then how, 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 what do I do? I say, I'm, just listen to me and maybe you get the idea. Maybe it'll help you. I, I hope so. Number three. Some men, men find nothing else but fault finding as a way of thinking. That's their mindset. They're not appreciative. They're not thankful. They're not praising. They're not worshiping. They're not being spirit-filled. They're not saying, oh, it's amazing. God in heaven sent his son so I could be saved, that all my sins would be taken away, that I could be spirit-filled. I could have vision for my life. I could take the, the stuff that the natural man lives in. And even in this whole thing called... Um, Middle age uh, crisis. What's that called? It is called that middle age crisis. It's like it's not a it, it, it mid gets stuck in the middle. You're getting stuck in the middle of your life. Why are you stuck in the middle of your life? Because of your heart. And if your heart is focused on these things that have hurt you. I wounded you, disappointed you, people, situations, then you have not, then you are not living in this love. 
For the Bible says this love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and it endures all things. Wow. What? Yeah, it could be 70 years old and like, like real fresh and crispy. I, I, could be, I could be an older person, but there's something that's happening because my, listen, you will not get away with a mentality that is carnal when it comes to God. You don't get away with it. You might say, yeah, but I'm, I'm gonna stick in this thing, this is the way I understand, this is what happened to me. And Lord say, how, how happy are you? How are you doing? And I say, I'm not very happy, and besides, I think you're disappointing me, God. You're letting me down, because I am not a happy person. And Lord will say, well, we should have a counseling session with you. I maybe get you straightened out. And if I could point in, I could point to you all the mentality that you have, the mentality you have, the focus that you have, because you are not walking in my love, my agape love. Another one. Evil thinking has no peace. It broods over assumed faults of others. It comes from a jealous heart. There is no peace to him who indulges in evil thinking. Another evidence of evil thinking is a disposition to complain of being neglected. I have had that happen in my life. I felt overlooked. Nobody cares much for me. I'm just a little guy sitting in the back row. Nobody notices me or cares for me. I feel neglected. Nobody cares about my humble opinion and what I have to say. When there's a group of three people talking, there's silence, I start to talk, and everybody else starts talking. Because nobody cares about what I have to say. That's how I feel, and that's the way it is. What are you going to do about it? Crawl in a corner and just brood. And brood on your disp the disposition that you have of being neglected or not respected. And I'm, I'm not beating up people that are feeling that way or thinking that way tonight. But I want to point something out to you and to me. This is a big subject. When it says that the love of God comes into our hearts, then you go with that change. And you don't go back to that stuff. You go, you get moving with the Lord in your faith. And you go with those circles. You go up to the higher ground. You go from the child mentality up here. And you go up to the higher ground in your mind and in your heart. And you start to start to think that, oh, wait a minute. What does it matter if somebody hurt me? What does it matter? Jesus Christ, he is my life. Well, wait a minute. What does it matter if I'm neglected and not respected? Maybe that is good for me. That I would learn to build on the right foundation and that I would have love and quietness and stability silently and not derive my self-image from how people think of me. But instead, I'll get it from the Holy Spirit of God and the love of God that is shed abroad in my heart. Is that true or not? Hey, when, we, when we're, we're, we're pulled apart, stripped down to nothing, what's there? God's love. God's love saying, I love you. God's love saying, I can do it. God's love saying, I am able. God's love saying, I forgive you. And they do it again. You say, I forgive you again. Don't even think about it. You do it again. I have pity on you. I'm sorry. You got an addiction of doing bad stuff. Maybe I can help you. I forgive you. I serve you. I teach you. I edify you. And I love you. And I don't quit at it because love never quits. Love does not. Isn't that amazing? What if every man, woman, and child, what if every husband, wife, Bible coach, every pastor, deacon, usher, what if every believer, little and big, everybody around the world, if the love of God was in our hearts and we were thinking with God? Because it says, love is not thinking evil. 
And that is a loaded statement. Now, I'll finish with this one. Another evidence of evil thinking is seen in not rejoicing at the prosperity of other people, nor mourning in their adversity. It is insensitive. There is no compassion. When Jesus came, that's one of the things that we gravitated to in his ministry was his compassion. That he had compassion, that he cared. That he would look at somebody in the face or in their heart and he knew them and he cared. And that's what's happened to us. We actually care. We actually have found freedom. And in caring, we have found freedom. And we have found edification and also creativity in ministry, just like love does. Love says to Peter, I was thinking of this, listen, we'll finish. Peter denied the Lord this way. First, he said, I don't know him. And the next woman who said, you were with him, he got stronger. And he said, um, he swore that I don't know him. He said, I don't know him. And he, he made a guarantee. I, there, I do not know him, absolutely not. And the third time, he was the strongest, and he said, he cursed. And it says that in the Greek, he blasphemed Christ. He blasphemed and he cursed him. It went from, I don't know him, to I don't know him, really, I don't know him, to... You know, very strong. And when Jesus met him at the seaside, he loved him and he called him in. He came in and Jesus said three times to him, do you love me? And he commissioned him. Love is creative. Love is kind. That's why he made him breakfast. Even before he talked to him, he just made him breakfast. Love is kind. Love, love will make the breakfast for your wife or for your husband. It'll, it'll serve your children without sentimentality, but it is creative. It'll find a way in the desert. It'll, it'll make a way. Love never fails. Love builds a capacity for relationships that endure. That's why we don't like religion, because religion, the, re the relationships cannot endure. They fall apart, and people treat each other in a very poor way because there is not love. But when we know Christ personally and the love of God is in our heart, the relationships go on and on and on and on, and they endure tremendous pressure. Because that is the nature of love. Cultivate it in your own life. And say, no, 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 that's not love. I'm not thinking that way. This is love. I'm not suspicious. No, 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 I'm not going to be suspicious. I'm going to believe. And, and if it's not so, I'm, not, I'm still not going to believe it. I'm still not going to believe it. Okay, David, remember when Jonathan said, David... My father's going to kill you. And David goes, ha, oh, no, he's not going to kill me. Jonathan said, he is. And David said, no, he's not. Remember that story? Uh, we're not naive, but on the other hand, I will give place to being naive. I, I'm not, I, I realize that there, there are, there are things that we all learn in our life, but I'm saying that there is a love that is in our heart that is believing the best, anticipating the best, putting on the Lord Jesus Christ and believing that forgiveness can change a person and preaching helps people and divine counseling and prayer and our simplicity and the motivation of love is what changes the world we're in. It really does. And one of the reasons why we might be disappointed in our lives is because we're not thinking with love. And that's the message tonight. I don't want to leave you hanging because you're going to say, well, how, how do I do I just say, I'm telling you, it's in you. Pay attention to it. Live in it. Stir it up. Think with it. Think with God. 
live in the doctrine, live in the body, live in love, live in forgiveness, and think and entertain the nature of God in your heart because it is there. And we will rejoice and be so thankful all the days of our life. It'll renew us. It'll strengthen us. We'll say, wow, what is going on? My life, I just am so contented. I am so satisfied and contented in my life. Not driven, not worried, not unresolved conflict, not broken relationships, but it just built up in Christ with love, God's love. That's amazing. All right, so amen. Let's have our prayer. If you're here tonight and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, we want to give you that invitation tonight, that opportunity right now to say by faith on the Internet, listeners, if you've never done it before, here in the auditorium, if you've never done it before, the anointing of God is here in us and with us. In this assembly meeting tonight, we are feeding on the Lamb of God that has taken away our sin and given us a new heart and a new mind. We are learning, God, to think with you. We are learning to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We are learning to literally have a transformed life. It's amazing. And it has a lot to do with what we dwell on and how we relate to life through you and be worshipers in truth and spirit and have a personal life with your personal fellowship, personal vertical relationship with you and lead us in it and teach us that. And then we would cultivate it in our families, our relationships, our friends, and all of our lives, all the days of our lives. Yes, Lord. If you're here tonight and like Jesus in your heart, Christ in your life, a new life, say, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe in you, and raise your hand here in the auditorium. Raise your hand, please. Anyone at all, put up your hand, please. Thank you. Anyone? 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 Okay. <clears throat> Father, we pray we need this instruction. Lead us in it in Christ's name. May this word dwell deeply and richly in us. We ask it in your name. Amen. <clears throat>